It's 2018. I wake up feeling sick after a late night of playing Vidya. Excited to play some Halo 2019. Xbox on. Xbox on. Please verify that you are Anon 332 by saying Doritos do it right. Doritos do it right. Error. Please drink a verification can. I reach into my Doritos Mountain Dew Halo 2019 war chest. There's only a few cans left. Needed to verify 14 times last night. I'm still feeling sick from 14 cans of Mountain Dew. Here, I'll just drink it actually. 13. <sighs> Force it down and grumble out. Mmm, that really hit the spot. The Xbox does nothing. I attempt to smile. Connecting to verification server. Verification complete. Oh, finally. Boot up Halo 2019. Finding multiplayer match. Error! User attempting to steal online gameplay. My mother just walked into the room. Adding another user to your game pass. This will be charged to your credit card. Do you accept? No! Console entering lock state to unlock. Please drink a verification can. I'm on my last can warning out of verification cans An order has been shipped and charged to your credit card. I drink half the can. Oh god. I'm gonna be sick I pour the last half can of, out of the window piracy detected. Please complete this advertisement to continue the Mountain Dew ad plays I have to dance for it. I'm feeling so sick. It makes me sing along. I'm dancing and singing. Mountain Dew is for me and for you. Mountain Dew is for me and for you. Mountain Dew is for me and for you. I throw up all over myself. I throw up on my TV and entertainment system. The router shorts out. Error. No connection. Xbox shutting down. Please drink a verification can to continue. I have been defeated. I have tried to start a segment talking about Unity and the situation that is going on with the Unity game development engine like four times now, and it has broken my mind. So uh, if I look bedraggled and defeated in this segment that you're about to watch, please forgive me because it has defeated my mind, okay? Uh, Unity is one of the most popular game engines on the market right now. Some of the most famous games of the last 10 years uh, have been made in Unity. And uh, uh, just so you guys are aware, I'm just gonna read off a couple of names. The people who are in live right now, you can see the chat is laughing their asses off because I've, I've completely died trying to communicate this segment. And now uh, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, but I'm just gonna read these off and then I'll get to the point. Uh, bear with me, please, because this has absolutely broken my mind, okay? Here's some of the games that have been made with Unity, all right? Cuphead, Hearthstone, Pokemon Go, Untitled Goose Game, Among Us. That's right, the original Among Us. City Skylines, Rust, Genshin Impact, Subnautica, Return of the Obra Dinn, Pillars of Eternity, Outer Wilds, Inscription, My Beloved Inscription, Tunic, My Beloved Tunic. Cult of the Lamb, Night in the Woods, Valheim, Temple Run, for those of you mobile gamers out there, Crossy Road, for those of you other, uh, I guess like four-year-olds, I guess are the people who play Crossy Road, Rimworld, Ori and the Will of the Wisp, Hollow Knight, the legendary Hollow Knight. Did I say Fall Guys already? All of these games have been made in Unity. Now, I'm not just talking about Unity uh, because a lot of it, games have been made in it, but rather because Unity has decided to take a move that is so egregiously greedy, so unbelievably rent-seeking, that it actually is likely to do severe damage to the entire gaming industry. What Unity is pushing, the changes that Unity is pushing right now, which we are about to dive into, will uh, permanently uh, reset uh, what is understood as fair pricing uh, in the gaming industry for the worse, okay? 
So as it, uh, as it exists now, you can purchase uh, varying yearly subscriptions to the Unity game engine uh, as uh, a individual, as a studio, as a uh, uh, as a team, there are a whole bunch of different versions. The uh, like main version that a lot of people use. This is what like individuals who are working on a game project uh, or might be collaborating with two or three other people or a handful of other people will use. Is co was called Unity Plus. Unity Plus cost about four hundred dollars a year, so not cheap necessarily, but totally understandable for a large project that you would want to work on. That is gone, okay? Uh, the ability to just pay for Unity and get to use it uh, for your project is essentially gone. Now, very small projects will still be able to basically have access to this. So if you're just making a project on your own, if it is not something that you intend to sell in the long run, you will still be able to pay uh, a, um, a, a, a basic... Uh, fee and have access to the engine as you were able to before but for everyone else for anyone who's attempting to sell their game and have their game reach a larger market you are going to have to deal with this this is unity's new payment schedule and immediately you might notice something very strange which is that this is based off of installs I'm going to dive into all the details here, but even somebody who isn't familiar with the game industry or gaming as a whole should be able to recognize immediately two glaring issues with an install-based model. The first, of course, is that people install shit all the time and uninstall shit all the time. M alone, on my computer, I uh, uninstall and reinstall games constantly sometimes i don't even end up playing the game after reinstalling it i have uninstalled and reinstalled dark souls 3 because i have replayed dark souls 3 like five times and sometimes i want to have uh how, how many gigabytes is this damn game this game is like what let me take a look at it how big is this damn game where's my there we go it's like 30 gigabytes actually that's not dark souls is not even that big still Sometimes I want to have 30 gigabytes of extra space on my beautiful, uh, 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 my beautiful little uh, solid state drive. Uh, so I'll uninstall it and then I'll reinstall it later when I'm like, maybe I want to play Dark Souls this weekend. So I'll install it and have it ready in case I want to play this weekend. Um, that's the first thing that immediately comes to mind. If you're, if you, if a game company is being charged for every time their game is installed, there could be some major issues there. And of course, the second part that should occur to basically anybody who thinks about this uh, is, well, how the hell would you even track that anyway? And that's a big, big, big question. Because um, tracking the number of installs on a game uh, and also then trying to discern what is a genuine fresh install and not a reinstall implies that you're likely going to be installing some sort of um, software that might watch and try to figure out. And some people, you might think, isn't there a word for something like this? Isn't there, a, what's it called when a piece of software is spying on your computer for an unnecessary reason that is totally contrived? There's a, there's a, is it, I, I think I know what it is. It's called James Bondware. <laughs> Bazinga. Nah, just kidding. Obviously it's fucking spyware, okay? Everybody has a concern of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, of spyware here because how the hell are you gonna monitor that anyway? But of course, there's the initial problem, which is why would you charge for, re for installs of a game? Somebody pays for their game why would you charge the game company just for installing it? Well, Unity doesn't seem to give a shit and has instead pushed forward this, all right? So we're gonna look at this. And this is the key part that we're going to be looking at here. So first of all, they have a revenue threshold, 
and this is what I was talking about why I said that personal projects are probably not going to be affected by this basically at all. Um, if your game makes less than $200,000, uh, you have not met the revenue threshold that they care about. Basically, your project is not big enough for them to, uh, to, to, to worry about it and they won't charge you. However, $200,000 in 12 months is a, is a fairly reasonable amount for a successful game project, which means that a lot of games are going to be hitting um, that revenue thing. And also you'll notice that the rate goes up, you have to bump up to a higher version uh, if your revenue goes up, that they're capping it. Unity Personal is going to have worse rates if you don't bump up to the more expensive version. Because of course, Unity Personal is uh, the cheapest version of Unity. Unity Pro is obviously more expensive and Unity Enterprise is designed for corporations that are buying this for a ton of people to use. So there's one part of this. Um, Brandy the Taoist Warlock says, super chat for all the devs that want Demon Mama to shout out Godot, a free and comparable option, yes. Obviously, in this household, we stand Godot. My partner, Fawn, is, it makes games in Godot. Um, so obviously, huge fan of Godot. But uh, even with Godot on the table, uh, and I do think that game developers in my audience who have previously used Unity should consider learning Godot. Um, but, uh, 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 but even still, there's a lot of people who are gonna be uh, hugely affected by these Unity changes. So back into this, let's take a look at this, okay? Installs over the install threshold. This is where we get into the nitty gritty and where it starts to really hurt some devs. You'll notice here, no matter how many, excuse me, no matter how many installs you have for Unity uh, Personal and Unity Plus, you are looking at paying 20 cents per install. So you can understand now how there is a two-pronged approach that is pushing you to bump up to this higher model and pay a significant amount more for the yearly subscription because you, paying 20 cents per install when you have between one and 100,000 installs over the threshold amount um, is is pretty intense. You can imagine how that would rack up. In fact, I think we have some of the, uh, someone here sent me, yeah, here we go. Someone sent me a chart here uh, talking about exactly this so we can get some hard numbers on it. So here we go. Unity wants 108% of our gross revenue. Our studio focuses on mobile games for kids. We don't display advertising to kids because we are against that and we don't want to. Our only way to monetize those games is through in-app purchases. We should be in charge to decide how and how and how much to monetize our users, not Unity. According to our last year numbers, uh, if we were in 2024, we would owe Unity 109% of our revenue, 1 million of revenue against 1.09 of Unity runtime fee. This means more than we actually earn. And of course, I'm not even taking into account our salaries, taxes, operational costs, and marketing. Does Unity even know anything about mobile games? Someone with a background should be fired for his ignorance about the market. So this is looking at, this is calculating based on their revenue and putting it up against this chart. So in this, uh, in this version, they made $1 million, which means they need to be in one of these two models. And of course, they have their net number of downloads, which is 101 million downloads, okay? So uh, I don't know exactly where the threshold is here because I don't know if they've actually published the exact thresholds. Uh, I assume they have somewhere, but I don't have that on hand. But you can see here, uh, even if we go above the threshold, you know, this threshold says it starts at 1 million. So obviously the, the threshold is not going to be, uh, you know, at 101 million downloads, okay? So you can see how this is starting to add up. They have 101 million downloads. If we go to the Unity Enterprise, let's assume they have the money as a small studio to afford Unity Enterprise. 
uh, they are going to be paying uh, uh, one cent per install at 101 seven eight eight seven nine four there we go which means they're looking at paying approximately one one million and seventeen thousand dollars which as you can see here their revenue from their game total was only one million and eight before paying anybody out of the studio so by Unity's most generous option, and that's if they qualify for this most generous option, their, Unity is asking them to take all of the money that this game made. That is deranged. And I want you to consider something else, which is that Unity, after being questioned by a number of journalists on this, has clarified, oh, don't worry. You can reinstall the game as many times as you want on a single device, but if you install a game, even if it's the same license, if you install it on a Steam Deck, on a mobile device or another mobile device, or if you install it on another computer, all of those are going to count as secondary installs. So, well, while you get to have the spyware on your computer that makes sure that you uh, are uh, in that your you know your uninstall was a legitimate uninstall, uh, you're going to get dinged for your Steam Deck. You're going to get dinged for the computer that you for your laptop that you travel with on the weekend. Uh, or sorry, I should say not you. The devs are going to get dinged uh, for all of these things. They're going to get dinged for uh, when you get a new phone, even if you were just upgraded your phone. Which I don't know if you know this, but people fucking upgrade their phones all the time and reinstall their old apps that's gonna ding the dev even though you already paid your price for the game and the devs already paid the price for unity so uh this is in short a absolutely ridiculous decision a decision that is so unbelievably greedy that most people can barely believe it's actually happening. It's hard to believe that uh, that a company, well, I would say it's hard to believe, but these days it really isn't anymore, is it? The title of this segment uh, on the stream when we were live is that capitalism is killing gaming. And this isn't the first time I've talked about this. I'm, I'm dead serious. It literally is. Not only is this actually so greedy that it's unworkable for every company that isn't a giant mega corporation already? Um, which means that a ton of small projects are just going to die now. There are a ton of small projects that had ambitions of being, hey, I hope our game can reach a reasonable level of success. Here's our beautiful and awesome indie game experience. The games that are some of the best in the world are these mid-range games. They're not this huge triple uh, A bombastic summer uh, blockbuster type uh, uh, experiences. They're these, they're games like uh like hollow knight they're games like um stardew valley they're these games that are uh um highly ambitious but small projects that are designed to hit a very special artistic and emotional niche and they succeeded that these are some of the best games in the world and these types of projects are going to be crushed by this type of change hades And uh, there's so many other games I could I could think of that are that are like this, where they're games that are successful, that make money, where the people are able to make a decent living, and they won't be able to with these types of changes. And let me ask let me ask you, why? Is Unity not profitable? Well, no, Unity is profitable. Actually, Unity is a a, a company that's making money and has extremely well paid. CEOs and executives. But you see, there's this thing with capitalism. And this is why I say it's capitalism that's killing gaming and not just Unity. Because it's not just Unity behaving like this, and Unity isn't the only one who wants to make changes in this direction. And in fact, if these changes uphold and it doesn't completely destroy Unity, I imagine other engines are going to emulate Unity and try to get this level of greed for their engine as well.
the thing with capitalism is that it requires a, it, a, it demands infinite growth. You can't just make money. You can't just be sustainable. In capitalism, you have to constantly be profiting. You have to constantly be growing your profit year over year. The structure of capitalist firms is to de develop a, a hunger, uh, a, a, a machine that hungers for constant growth, constant uh, outstepping what it was. And obviously, that isn't viable for every single type of product. There are some products that might be able to grow for a very long time, but even the most popular products in the world have a maximal limit. There, Coca-Cola is limited by the fact that people can only drink, there are only so many people on the planet and they can only drink so much Coca-Cola. Until we get into like uh, uh, truly dystopian situations where you imagine, mm, what if we made it, what if we genetically altered humans so that their, their blood is replaced with Coca-Cola and their blood dries out every day so they have to continually be drinking more and more Coca-Cola if they want to live. Ha <sighs> ha! Um, we've talked about this type of uh, endless profit seeking, endless rent seeking in the gaming industry and how it's so bad for gaming for a really long time. I've talked about it with the endless march of microtransactions, specifically gambling mechanics like loot boxes. Um, uh, and I have some funny, and uh, I've talked about it with battle passes and how battle passes are designed specifically Battle passes are designed to emotionally manipulate gamers explicitly. They are, that is their main purpose. A battle pass is designed to make it feel like you are constantly on a timeline, like you have homework every single day or else you aren't getting your money's worth. It's designed to make you feel bad, okay? They are not designed to make a game better. They are not designed to make a game feel better. It's designed to make you feel worse when you don't engage with the product, okay? And I've talked in the past, I did an enormous rant uh, uh, in the past about why I stopped playing games that have loot boxes and battle passes with very few exceptions. There is once in a while I will play, I will like tolerate with a very limited approach, a game that has a battle pass um, if I think that the core game experience is, is fine. But I don't engage with those things anymore. I remove them from my life and I am way happier for it. I have, as a result, had way more time to actually fully enjoy games um, like the Souls games. Um, which are some of my favorites and other uh, truly uh, blessed and unique, complete artistic experiences in games because I decided that I wasn't going to be uh, uh, spending my short, short life being emotionally manipulated to buy things. I want to talk about um, uh, a little more about this whole Unity thing. There's two more interesting... Um, uh, two more very, very interesting uh, bits about this. First of all, uh, is that um, the the guy, the CEO who is in charge of Unity right now is the former CEO of EA Games, uh, AKA the CEO who was in charge of EA Games when EA Games was voted as uh, the world's worst company uh, online. Uh, uh, um, I, I can't even remember who ran that that thing. It was one of the uh, one of the uh, like a BuzzFeed or something like that ran it. Would every single year would run a poll uh, uh, to try and figure out who the most hated company was, and EA won it multiple times while this guy was in charge. Okay, yeah, it's John Ricciatello. Rich, John Ricciatello. He's also infamous for uh, going on a rant. Uh, where he talks about how um, he wanted to, uh, he had an idea, just a little idea, uh, and he was talking about how uh, he wants to put mechanics in games, like, for example, um, having a pop-up that says you need to pay a dollar to reload your next magazine 
uh, when you're playing an online shooter game because he knows that in the heat of the moment, uh, gamers will just press yes and will pay $1 because they are involved actively in an experience that is important to them and that they should take advantage of that to make money. Does anybody have that? Uh, does anybody have that that uh, that clip? I didn't. I didn't have it on hand. Uh, but if anybody has that clip, uh, I would absolutely hold on. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I want to play it for you, just so you guys believe me. Going around. I wish they had a better version of it. Oh God, it's so cringe with the terrible music. Was the music actually there? Like, was he talking over a game trailer or something? Anyway, whatever. Let's listen to it. A substantial portion of digital revenues are microtransactions. When you are six hours into playing Battlefield and you run out of ammo in your clip and we ask you for a dollar to reload, you're really not very price sensitive at that point in time. Um, and for what it's worth, the cogs on the clip really low. And so um, essentially what ends up happening and the reason the, the play first, pay later model works so nicely is the consumer gets engaged in a property, they might spend 10, 20, 30, 50 hours on the game. And then when they're deep into the game, they're well invested in it. We're not gouging, but we're charging. And we're not gouging, I swear, we're not gouging, we're charging. We're charging you for the thing that you already paid for. We're manipulating you emotionally to pay for something that you already paid for, you know? We're not gouging you. So, yeah, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that uh goofy cringe ass music aside um that is uh that is <laughs> that is quite literally the person that we're talking about that is the current ceo of unity and the former ceo of ea okay and the other thing uh uh that i wanted to talk about uh with regard to this whole uh messed up deranged uh, uh unity situation um, is, is the fact that, um, it's already, uh, oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> There's actually two more things. The first one is that this announcement alone is already having ripples in the gaming world. Um, there are already companies who are having to scramble right now to try and make sure that they are not going to be, be completely destroyed by this. I've mentioned that there are games that are being currently developed. Thankfully, games that are currently uh, that games that are currently released with Unity and exist on the market now uh, are only are not going to retroactively have this applied. That would be impossible and illegal. Um, however, going they are going to have their downloads going forward. This is going to be applied to it. So games are going to have to decide whether they want to keep their game listed or whether they're ready to foot a new bill which might be quite hard, seeing as how a lot of game success comes from the initial sales. Um, they might not have the money to, to, to foot these kind of ridiculous and outrageously greedy bills. Um, I don't think that's copyright. I'm pretty sure that's from a video game. I don't, I don't think, wait, did the VOD get hit? I don't think it did. Did I get cut out? Anyway, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Um, uh, anyway, uh, the other thing that I was gonna say is that, um, the other thing that I was gonna say is that uh, in, an, in a act of supreme cowardice and bl blatant, blatant um, uh, 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 capitalistic rent-seeking greed, a whole bunch of Unity's uh, executives sold stock in Unity right before they announced this because they, of course, knew that this was going to be an unpopular decision. And being a part of the company, you know what's coming down the pipeline, you sell a whole bunch of your stocks, including the CEO, John Ricitello, that we just talked about, um, sold thousands of his stocks. Other members of the, uh, uh, of the board um, uh, sold um, millions of dollars worth of stock on the days before this decision came down. 
um, which is super interesting, you know? It's really, really interesting, and you definitely, definitely have the best interests of your company, of your customers, and of your employees in mind when you deliberately sell your, sh your stock before a bad decision comes down so that you can then rebuy it at a later point when you're gouging customers, but you don't have to lose any money from the decision that you made that's going to make your stock lose money. This is definitely a working system, and it's definitely the gender agenda that's destroying video games and not the unfettered greed of unrestrained capitalism. Gaming is made worse because of this crap. Gaming, good artistic projects that give people a, a, a vision and joy in their lives are crunched because of ruthless greed from people who are already multimillionaires, okay? The, the people benefiting from decisions like this aren't your day-to-day, -day, everyday workers at Unity, okay? The people who are benefited by decisions like this, as we can see, are by the people at the absolute very top, the little tippy top of the pyramid, who can sell their stocks and fuck over their own company and say, ha ha, fuck you, I got mine. Now, there's another thing I have to talk about um, before this goes down, which is, of course, that this isn't going to stop. Uh, these types of, 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 of changes, these type of rampant expansions of greed are totally regular in nearly every single capitalist industry. Um, you guys, all of us have been witness. Every every person who's even remotely connected to the internet has been has been has become aware of uh, what has happened to websites like Twitter, websites like Reddit, uh, uh, hell, even uh, even websites like uh, like these like like uh, online journalism. Uh, 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 every single um, newspaper that you would read online or blog getting loaded with manipulative ads all to squeeze a little more money out. Um, this is a trend, a constant trend. Products that are that are excellent products that are offered for reasonable prices or perhaps even free to a passionate uh, 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 consumer base. When they reach success, they are bought up by uh, the most cold and calculating ghouls who find ways to strong arm uh, the users uh, into paying more and more money and slowly hollow out the product. How many goddamn times have we seen this happen? How many incredible uh, uh, websites, uh, games, um, uh, uh, entertainment suites, tool sets have we seen go through this exact same path there are so many things that once existed and were usable that are uh have transformed into horrifically manipulative um uh versions of what they once were adobe is kind of a low-hanging fruit but I want you guys to think that, to, to remember that at one point in the past, it was possible for you to just buy a CD of Adobe and you were good to go. You paid a single fee and you got to use the software to make the art that you wanted to make. And now, not only uh, do you have to pay a subscription, but you, you have to sign contracts. When, when I was in college, uh, I I had uh, uh, like I I had to sign a contract to be able to get access to Adobe, and they tried because I uh, I had to leave school because of financial issues, and they tried to say that I owed them a thousand dollars because I wanted to stop my subscription to Adobe. I didn't even realize because of the way that it was the way uh, because of how much garbage they throw at you that they that you are signed in for a contract of subscription, not an upfront fee. It's not that you're paying for a year. It's that you're agreeing to subscribe for monthly payments for a year. And if you try to leave, they try to charge you for the rest of the year in that moment.
capitalism is an unsustainable system of endless greed. It is a system that puts numbers, money, that puts machines of profit before anybody, any of the people who actually make, use, enjoy, invent, iterate, improve these things. People are ignored. Their needs and their desires are ignored or in, as we see here, explicitly manipulated and abused in order to make profit for the people who are at the tippy top. And it makes a lot of stuff worse. Specifically, it makes art worse. Art, artistic industries are always the ones where we see it the most easily because art is something that requires an incredible amount of risk. Art is, is something that takes an incredible amount of, of, of human personal investment. You really can't just uh, uh, assembly line art. Even the art that that can be slightly more easily assembly lined uh, ends up suffering as a result of that. And uh, it's not, I, I say that art is like one of the most obvious. It's not the only one. Another one that's like, this is science, which I think we can all agree that science is pretty fucking important, right? But science is necessarily a, a sphere of the world that requires an incredible amount of risk, personal ingenuity, uh, investment. It is not, it is very difficult to make a scientific growth and the growth of knowledge, which is valuable for, for countless reasons. It is, inc we need that shit. The only way we live good lives is if we are able to continue to grow and improve and innovate and invent new things. And if we are able to enjoy and reflect and dive deep into our emotions uh, and share together. These are, the, these are things that make life worth living. And they are the hardest things to make, for pro to, to make profitable because of their nature and capitalism hates that. And so what they do is it they hijack it and they fucking ruin it. Capitalists ruin this shit for their own gain. I don't know how else to put to, to I don't know. People might get mad that I'm that I'm talking about capitalism and gaming. I know a lot of people don't like to hear it, but I don't know how else you uh, I don't know how else you 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 can analyze this a a change that is completely unnecessary that actually will will destroy currently currently profitable projects because they're not profitable enough. Unity would continue to make money off of these projects, but they wouldn't be making all of the money. They wouldn't be making uh, 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 such a large percentage that they can buy another uh, yacht, a yacht which has a yacht inside of it. And I think that the only way that we really change this is, uh, well, there's, a, of course, the path to changing this is incredibly complicated. But for me and for a lot of us, the only way that we really engage with this is to get so fucking tired of it that we don't tolerate it anymore, that we're not willing to play ball with this garbage. To get to the point where people uh, are so turned off by, by this greed crap that they won't even touch a game that has a battle pass in it. They won't even touch a game uh, made by somebody who says they want to charge you six hours into a game for using a health pack because that's the optimal time to emotionally manipulate you while you're trying to enjoy a artistic project that was made, not, not even made by them made by people who actually give a shit. The people who make the game want you to experience the game. They want you to, to, to feel the things that they put all this work into, making the art and the mechanics and fine tuning everything so that when you play it, it feels awesome. And they go, oh man, I love it when my, I love it when the players are enjoying this thing that I made for them. And the craziest thing, like I said, the thing that I always come back to at the end of all of this, of course, is just, it's, it's not even that these things weren't making money. These games do make money. They make a lot of money for everyone. 
but it's not all the money. It's not, it's not a big enough slice. It's not enough that, you, that the CEO can get a yacht within a yacht. And it is pathetic. So I hope that people continue to become, to become burnt out by this. I hope that people continue to get angry about this. Because uh, gamers, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but gamers deserve better, okay? And what's more is that so do the artists that make the games, okay? There is a army of people putting their heart and soul into making beautiful, beautiful products. Okay, beautiful work. I don't even like calling them products. Beautiful works of art. We're about to dive into one in a, in a little bit. I got one more segment to do and then we're doing Dark Souls. A, a genuine work of art that is not just inspiring in the moment, but has inspired an entire beautiful community of people doing art inspired by it. A game like Dark Souls, if you don't believe me about this, look at how much fan art, not just fan art, but uh, but uh, 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 fan projects have spun off of Dark Souls. How many people have done unbelievably creative and unique lore analyses that are works of art in and of themselves? Uh, uh, there are people who do lore videos on Dark Souls that is like, a, it, it's, it's a performance isn't in and of itself. And watching the lore video even though it's tied to Dark Souls, is a, un is, is a distinct, unique, creative experience that you can sit through, that flowed out from this, from this creation of an amazing work of art. And all of that shit gets fucking choked by decisions like this fucker, at, made by this fucker at Unity. That, that gets choked out by the constant need to turn every single game into a never ending, abusive lottery money mill. And I'm not even getting into the other stuff. I show this thing off once in a while. This is a handmade Dark Souls inspired uh, 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 notebook made by an artist who was inspired by Dark Souls as I am and made a leather bound notebook. This, this is precious to me and I use it for very important notes. This would have never happened if it wasn't for a game like Dark Souls. And games like Dark Souls are harder and harder to make in an industry that demands that everything has to be uh, emotionally manipulative to squeeze out another dollar or cent. Can you imagine? Uh, can you imagine Dark Souls 1 with fucking loot boxes? Can you imagine any of the Dark Souls games trying to happen with loot boxes and battle passes and uh, ads popping up? Can you imagine you're like, uh, you're like exploring this incredibly terrifying environment, uh, 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 trying to find a rare ring uh, that you have to do this really convoluted story for, and right as you're about to get hit by a skeleton, a fucking ad pops up and says, you need to watch this Clash of Clans ad or this PragerU ad for 30 seconds before you know whether you parried the skeleton or not. Yeah, you walk into Firelink Shrine and you're going to go talk to the, uh, the Great Serpent and he's like, and his mouth opens and it just says, Hello Fresh is, is every cook's f dream come true. You can get delicious vegetarian meals for just $35 a month at HelloFresh.com. Come on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna end this with something that's less, that's more funny, okay? Here we go, all right? The, I love this one. Thank you for whoever sent this to me in chat. Pirate game, company loses $60. Delete game. Company receives back $60. Pirate game one million times. Company loses $60 million and declares bankruptcy. Buy company for a few dollars and become the CEO. Delete all the pirated copies off my computer. $60 million deposited into my account. Suddenly the CEO of my own game company with millions to make my dream game. Genius, genius tier. A, a genius play. It's 2018. 
I wake up feeling sick after a late night of playing Vidya. Excited to play some Halo 2019. Xbox on. Xbox on. Please verify that you are Anon 332 by saying Doritos do it right. Doritos do it right. Error. Please drink a verification can. I reach into my Doritos Mountain Dew Halo 2019 war chest. There's only a few cans left. Needed to verify 14 times last night. I'm still feeling sick from 14 cans of Mountain Dew. Here, I'll just drink it actually. Force it down and grumble out. Mmm, that really hit the spot. The Xbox does nothing. I attempt to smile. Connecting to verification server. Verification complete. Oh, finally. Boot up Halo 2019. Finding multiplayer match. Error! User attempting to steal online gameplay. My mother just walked into the room. Adding another user to your game pass. This will be charged to your credit card. Do you accept? No! Console entering lock state. To unlock, please drink a verification can. I'm on my last can. Warning! Out of verification cans! An order has been shipped and charged to your credit card! I drink half the can. Oh god, I'm gonna be sick. I pour the last half can of, out of the window. Piracy detected! Please complete this advertisement to continue! The Mountain Dew ad plays. I have to dance for it. I'm feeling so sick. It makes me sing along. I'm dancing and singing. Mountain Dew is for me and for you. Mountain Dew is for me and for you. Mountain Dew is for me and for you. I throw up all over myself. I throw up on my TV and entertainment system. The router shorts out. Error. No connection. Xbox shutting down. Please drink a verification can to continue. There you have it. My lovely imps, if you enjoyed this uh, unbelievable rant about the horrific state of gaming, which is caused by the rampant and unfettered greed of our, our heinous late capitalistic system, whether you like it or not, you can seethe and whine about me talking about capitalism all you want, but that's the truth. If you like this, please press subscribe down below. Uh, I talk about this type of stuff all the time. And uh, if you are a dev or a gamer who is going to be impacted by the Unity changes, leave a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are because I would love to hear them. Thank you so much.